Oxenfree is a game that has everything going for it. A sort of cozy yet spooky atmosphere built on the tried and true 80s-ish lo-fi aesthetic. A sort of technological paranormal mystery thriller featuring a group of kids who get dragged into some threat much bigger than any of them can reasonably comprehend, and yet somehow they succeed anyway. Now, that all sounds like something you might find in a certain show on a certain streaming service, and I mean, that's for good reason. Sean Crankle, one of the developers at Night School Studio, even went on to say in an interview that, For us, we wanted something a little bit more, I know it sounds lame, but Spielbergian, and sort of give it a sense of wonder and have it, for a while, just be actually interacting with these supernatural creatures, where it's almost a little bit fun and hopefully gives you butterflies in your stomach before it gets pretty crazy. And they nailed it. They had a vision and executed on that vision extremely well. It's clear directly on the packaging that Oxenfree emulates that Spielbergian feeling. The same sort of mystical intrigue that you'd find in something like Stranger Things. So it comes as no surprise that a few years later, Night School Studio was acquired by Netflix. It feels kind of weird to say that any game is playable on Netflix, but this is one of them, and it'll be joined by its sequel in July of 2023. By extension, then, it also makes more sense when you hear that a TV show based on the game is also in development. The prospect of Netflix games is kind of a weird one for me, but if Netflix is going to start anywhere with its game publishing, then this is where it makes the most sense. Not with some crazy action platformer, but with a small story-based indie game. The story of Oxenfree follows Alex as she goes on a weekend party at Edwards Island with her old friend Ren and her new stepbrother Jonas. The three are joined by Clarissa, the ex-girlfriend of Alex's now-deceased brother Michael, and Clarissa's friend Nona. The night gets off to a pretty bog-standard start with a game of truth or slap. Basically, truth or dare, but with less dare and more slap. As you can imagine, teenagers, drama, whatever, and Alex, Ren, and Jonas split off to go explore a nearby cave which is rumored to have some spooky paranormal stuff going on inside. Turns out the rumors have at least some merit as Alex uses her radio to tune into a big spooky triangle, everything goes dark, and she and Jonas wake up in a field on the other side of the island. It's then up to Alex to find her friends dealing with all sorts of spooky radio punk shenanigans along the way. The story in Oxenfree is mostly presented through dialogue and interactive chat bubbles. Think something kind of akin to any Telltale game, where you have a few options for things to say, and if you wait a little while, not saying anything at all is also an option. Every dialogue choice comes with a unique response from the characters, and even though the conversation may still loop around and end the same way, what you say will have an effect on how characters react and speak to you later, as well as consequences further on in the story. This parallel to Telltale Games is no coincidence either. One of the founding members of Night School Studio, Adam Hines, is a Telltale alumni, having worked on games such as Tales from the Borderlands and The Wolf Among Us, directly before his work on Oxenfree. Outside of the interactive dialogue, you'll be interfacing with the world around you by tuning to specific frequencies on Alex's pocket radio. This is how you'll learn more about Edwards Island. Since the island is somewhat of a tourist destination, there are information stations scattered all over the place, each equipped with a radio frequency that transmits guided museum tour style history factoids. You can also find all sorts of spooky Easter eggs, for lack of a better term, strewn across the island, from spooky messages to Morse code. And of course, the radio can unlock doors and do real spooky stuff. But before I can get into that, I need to issue an official spoiler warning. Keep watching at your own risk. Still here? Okay, cool. Let's backtrack a bit to that thing I said about Alex's brother, Michael. You see, a pretty constant theme throughout the game is Alex's grief and guilt surrounding her brother's death. It comes up over and over. Your very first interaction in the game is with Jonas, Alex's new stepbrother. Her parents divorced shortly after Michael's death, and her mother is now married to Jonas's father, a fact that Clarissa wastes no time getting into the moment she can, grilling Alex for the reason. You can tell that this is still a very recent scar for Alex, and the what-ifs are still hanging over her head. The constant thoughts of, what if I had just done something differently? What if I made a different choice? Could I have prevented it? All of this plays very heavily into the story, as we later learn that Michael's death may have felt to Alex like a direct result of her actions. 
As some mysterious paranormal entities harass Alex and her friends at every turn, her mind still slips back to Michael and her final moments with him. Alex and her friends get stuck in time loops, toyed with, possessed, and still, Clarissa brings it up, directly blaming Alex for his death. In a series of flashbacks, we learn that Michael had just finished high school and was getting ready to head off to college. He's unsure about a lot of things in his life and turns to his sister for some help. Despite her being a fair bit younger than him, he still looks for her approval. He wants to know her opinion of Clarissa, who Alex doesn't seem to get along with very well. He's unsure of whether he should stay home or go off to college like everyone expects of him, and of course, Alex sees a lot of potential in him. She assures him that heading off to school is the best choice. But before he goes, they have one final trip to the beach. One last swim before he leaves. And he drowns. In front of Alex, out of her control. They wouldn't be there at all if she had just made different choices. If she hadn't assured him that college was the right way to go. The what-ifs flowed around her head. The idea of having told him something else. Changing the course of history. Preventing all of this from ever happening. So she does. And in a disorienting moment she believes to be some timey-wimey ghost-induced hallucination on the island, she changes the past. She makes a different choice. And Michael is back. For the most part, Oxenfree reads like a story about grief, about learning to live with the past. But if that were really the case, why in the world would you be able to bring your brother back from the dead? Well, because Oxenfree isn't about grief. It's about the power of choice, the decisions you make, and how you deal with the consequences of your actions. A few days before Alex and her friends' arrival on the island, a woman named Maggie Adler quietly passed away. Before she did, however, she left several notes scattered across the island for the right person to find. In these notes, she details her time spent as a radio operator on Edwards Island, how on one faithful day in 1943, she received a transmission from the USS Canaloa, an experimental nuclear submarine stationed just off the coast. There was only one problem. This was a distress signal, and it was garbled, cut off at the end. She interpreted it as an attempt to jam the radars at the base and ordered a recommendation to scout the signal and bomb if necessary. The submarine was sunk by friendly fire. On board were 85 crew members and 12 passengers, 97 innocent lives lost due to a decision she had made, the guilt over which she would carry for the rest of her life. Sometime after the event, Maggie started picking up strange transmissions, seemingly from the lost crew of the Canaloa. She reported them to her officers and they were immediately written off as a prank or faulty equipment, but she knew that something had happened to the people aboard the submarine, that they had not been lost when it was sunk, at least not lost in the traditional sense of the word. She and her friend Anna would go on to investigate the signal themselves. This is when they find the very same cave that Alex and Jonas ventured into at the beginning of the story. Throughout her time on the island, Alex learns that something horrible happened to Anna, that she disappeared in that cave, supposedly transferred to some dimension beyond our own, joining the lost passengers of the Canaloa. Having learned about the fate of the sunken and the role they have been playing that night on the island, Alex confronts the ghosts where the signal is strongest, back at the cave. This is where they offer her a choice. Sacrifice her friends so the sunken may return to the world in their bodies, or join them in some realm beyond. What happens from there is completely up to you. So yeah, Oxenfree is a game about choices, about accepting the consequences of your actions, whether they're good or bad. Your choices matter, they have power. You just won't always be able to predict what will happen as a result. And it's important to recognize that. Alex lost her brother as a result of her advice for him to go off to college. But is that her fault? Well, no, not really. Throughout the game, Alex makes countless decisions, and the results of those choices can vastly affect the lives of the people around her. When the game is over, you're presented with a summary of those results, telling you how Alex's friends think of her, what their relationships with each other are like, and even whether or not her brother is alive. And shortly after that, we're presented with this screen, the prominent option to continue the timeline. As anyone who's played a choose-your-own-adventure game will tell you, it can be frustrating when you don't get the exact ending you want from a game. Many people will play a game a second or third time, or even more, just to get that perfect ending. We obsess. We think about the what-ifs. We let the power of choice get to us and weigh us down. 
It can sometimes be impossible to get that perfect ending you really want. So why worry about it in the first place? The game doesn't really end when you get the perfect ending, it only ends when you stop playing. So accept the choices you've made, roll with the punches, keep on keeping on, and thanks for watching.